morning everybody, Speaker Medic here. And welcome to another exciting episode of On The Bench. Um, today's one of those days where it's kind of rainy, cloudy outside. And so I'm staying inside. This is also one of the first days of this so-called uh, quarantine coronavirus thing that's keeping so many of us out of work and uh, are away from work. And uh, so I kind of want to discuss some of that today. Now, please excuse me if, if I ramble a little bit or I, I stutter or stumble on the words. I've just got a camera set up overhead. And this is a one-shot deal, basically, because I've only got one shot to do this. And so if I make a mistake or I backtrack or something, uh, give me a little leeway. Okay, today here's what we're going to discuss. I've got a customer that brought these in. Um, and... Uh, recently did some work on some speakers lately. We'll discuss this voice coil situation here in a couple of minutes. But as you can see, I've got a Carbon PS10 ProLite speakers, 200 watts, 8 ohms. And on this side, I've got a Carbon PS10 Pro Series loudspeaker, 200 watts, 8 ohms. For all intents and purposes, this is the exact same speaker. I can show you on the Carbon numbers that if you can see or not, probably can't. But this is a 67 right here, this little number, and then some codes. A 67, oops, excuse me. The 67 means that this is made by, this is what we call an EIA number. This is made by Eminence. Okay? Up here is the little tiny numbers, but it's a 10387. And over here we have a 1034FR. These are basically codes telling you what the speaker is. A lot of times when I order parts, I'll order by this particular number here, the 10387. And then the parts manufacturer, the parts distributor knows what I'm talking about. Let's check this other speaker out here. There we go. 10387, and it's also got the 67 code, and the 1034FR code, okay? Now, I've taped these over because there is a letter difference between the two speakers. The reason being, because one of these speakers is American, and one of these speakers is actually Chinese. And so, we're going to look here and see if we can tell what the difference is. Okay, now let's, uh, let's examine, uh, let's say the lead wires and the coils here, okay? We've got a little square plate, nothing too fancy here. Uh, you can't tell, but these lead wires go through the terminal and they're just glued down and then pinched to make connection. There's a little bit different terminal here, but they're both marked plus and minus. These lead wires go through and they're actually soldered. And you've got your double connector there, so that's, eh, you know, not that much difference. Okay, hard to tell, but... The speaker, this speaker, is slightly deeper than this speaker. If I had you a side shot, you could probably tell that, but you can see if I'm level here, I can push down. There's about a quarter of an inch difference there. Not that it makes any difference, but it is something different. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, this speaker is dented because it's been dropped. It has nothing to do with where it came from. It's just pointing that out. You might see the little difference in the height there. Magnets look pretty much the same. This magnet goes straight against the back plate or the backing of the uh, basket. This one seems to be tapered and there's a little space there. That's kind of odd. No, but let's look at the front side. This one has a little bit smaller dust cap. I've cut that off. This one has a larger dust cap. The surrounds appear to be basically the same. The cones appear to be basically the same. The voice coil, however, I'm not sure how I can show that, but the voice coil, this one seems to be small, is a different size than this one. Let's take something and see if we can mark it. And see, I, I can't really get calipers down there to measure, but. Let's see. Let's go here and let's take a marking pen and make a mark 
And that's basically the size of our voice coil. Let's go over to this voice coil now. Ah, uh, well, yeah, not exactly. But this voice coil seems to be a little bit different size. Once I get into this, we'll measure that out and find out for sure. Okay, we've got a screen inside this port here. We've got a screen on the back of this port, so they both have a screen. All right, I can't really tell once I cut these out what's what, so let's do this. Let's mark an A. I'll do this because I'm writing upside down. And let's mark a B. And let's go upside down. And we'll mark an A. And we'll mark a B. Okay? So that we don't get the voice coils and everything mixed up. Well, let's go ahead and cut these cones out. And see if we can compare once we get to the inside. We'll cut there. We're going to cut that wire there. Cut that wire there. Now let's go ahead and cut out the Let's see here. We're going to cut across there. And let's see if we can take this out without damaging it too much. one out. And we're going to cut there. Let's see if I can get this off here. Okay, so both systems are loose. Let's look at the difference in the depth of the spider. Well, the A one is deeper than the B one. Let's look at the depth of the line. Well, the A one has more windings on it than the B one. Now let's look at the difference in diameters. Wait a minute. One goes right inside. Barely goes right inside the other. That's kind of the same problem that we had with this voice coil. Believe it or not, these are out of an RCF. Okay. So these are out of an RCF. You see two voice coils there? No. Let's do this. You see two voice coils now. One of them fits with just thousands of an inch difference inside the other. Okay, the reason I'm showing this, that's the wrong one. That goes there, that's go there. I want you to guess which one of these is made in America and which one of these speakers is Chinese. Take a couple of seconds. Okay, time's up. Did you choose this one as American? Or did you choose this one as American? This one you say? Okay, let's see. I purposely taped over. What do we have? Made in the USA. And nothing. So we're looking at a Chinese speaker, okay? What is the problem with that? Well, basically nothing. It's not necessarily inferior to the American. However, there are many shortcuts taken with this. As you notice, this spider was taller, yet 
the whole frame is shorter. How can that be? Well, it's because once we send our technology over, oh, also notice here, here's a difference. This frame is screwed to the magnet, or this frame appears to be welded and pinned to the magnet so it's not coming off. But the problem with this is, is when we farm our equipment out, or our, our, our manufacturing out to Chinese companies, um, to save a few bucks, we're also, unfortunately, forced to do a trade or a technology trade with them. So that means that basically they have the workings and the designs on every single thing that's manufactured in China. Speakers, maybe it's not that big of a deal, but all of our electronics, computers, medical things, everything that we build over here that we did once build, that we're building over there now is being done cheaper, not only in price, but in quality and they know exactly how to do it they can steal everything that we've done they can take the market away from us to where we can't compete with them because they have all our plans for everything Yamaha's moved over there QSC does some things over there Crown does some things over there uh, good God there's any number of American speakers companies that are over there and you know especially all the plastic speakers that are pre-amplified now are made over there so what do you think you know those this particular voice coil here I told you alone is made was supposed to be Italian made and this is made over there this is an RCF one of the best speakers out there and now when I go to order parts and I say give me a cone re-kit for an RCF, whatever, or, or an eminence, whatever, and they send me the parts, they don't fit. I, I can't put them in there. So I end up wasting my time measuring out some kind of strange metric size things that we don't particularly manufacture to try to force into this kit and try to make the speaker work. And we're talking thousands of an inch nothing you know but it makes all the difference in the world when you get into a precision unit like this here's another thing that I want to show you if I can get the material out the reason there's a difference in the depth of these speakers is because this is all metal everything is mounted to metal it's one size basket that's why this is flat I told you this was tapered on the back side it's not going to fit exactly the same. There has to be something, obviously, to make up the difference in the height. You know, because like I said, we already know that if one voice coil fits out inside the other voice coil, that these parts are not going to fit this frame. So basically, this American-made unit can be rebuilt, remanufactured. Bring it in. A third of the price of buying a brand new speaker, we've built this one and you're on your way. This one, throw it in the garbage and get yourself a whole new speaker. Now, let me show you some of the tactics that they do. We just busted that out of there. If that was metal, where am I? If that was metal, I could not do that. This is ABS plastic. They cut a ring of plastic, use it for a spacer. You can see how I pulled that right off of there. I can't sand on this. I can't clean the gasket off. It's just going to tear the plastic up. A lot of times this plastic doesn't stay into the glue. It comes right loose, rattles like hell, and basically it's another doorstop. So that is my basic uh, on the bench session for today trying to tell you that anytime that you can buy American anytime that you can hire American if you don't know and I can guarantee you when you go into the music stores the guy that you buy this speaker from he's not gonna know where it's made but do your research and see if you can find out somehow where these things are made or you know you're welcome to call me if you want and I can give you some tips I know I was blown away when I really thought I was doing an RCF speaker the other day or the parts and I said hey this doesn't fit. This won't go in there. And they said, it's got to. That's, that's the model number you gave us. No, I said, the spider's wrong. The voice coil's wrong. The cone's wrong. Everything's wrong. 
And I said, that doesn't fit. So I, I had to measure, jerry-rig. I, I made the speaker work, as, and it works beautifully, but there was only one voice coil the exact dimensions that I needed. They didn't, you know, usually there's dozens of them in different, in different ohms and different heights and different things that I could work with. There was one voice coil and it was a fluke that I found anything to fit. The, the, the speaker basically should have been thrown away because there's just no standardized parts for it. So my point of bringing this up today is obviously you hear me talk a lot about uh, Chinese products and you know my dissatisfaction with Chinese products. I'm not going to hide that. You know I'm not biased. They have a right to make money too. But but um, I'm upset that that you actually pay for something that you believe is a quality American-made product that you can amply get replacement parts for. And it turns out that basically what you bought was something that was a throwaway item. Um, I'm upset about the fact that the technology has gone over there and what I'm most upset about now is that um, you know there's been a lot of talk about this coronavirus and whether it's bull or you know whether it's a hype or not but there are so many things that I have questions about on this um, for example um, the fact that uh, things were going well the economy was going fantastically everybody was making money Trump was doing deals with other companies to get rid of NAFTA, which was something that should never have been passed to begin with. I hated that one. That was being discussed years ago under the Clinton administration. But the thing is, is Trump, or excuse me, uh, China has been screwing us for years. That's all there is to it. They've been taking our technology, undercutting us, giving us garbage in return, and so that we basically become dependent upon China to survive for all our, all our, all our electronics, all of our medical, you know, thousands of different items, you know, we've become dependent upon China. Now, finally, a politician stood up to them, Trump stood up to them, forced them into a different type of agreement where we were actually going to come out ahead on this, and it was, it was basically stopping the technology loss and um, stopping them from devaluing their money to make it to where everybody bought from them and took away from us. And so, yes, it hit the stock markets, it hit everything. But two weeks after we signed an agreement that they didn't like, all of a sudden this strange virus comes out. Uh, and it doesn't seem to hit countries that are really close to them. To my understanding, uh, there's, a, there's only one case in Russia. There are no cases in India. They basically trade borders they're they're basically right there at china and and but they don't have those kind of trade deals with them they're not really hurting with them and uh, all of a sudden this disease is spread throughout the world and of course there's a lot of hype on it it's a lot it's not anywhere near as as bad as what they're saying it's basically a bad cold but all of a sudden um things are bright and rosy in china their stock market didn't drop down like ours did and now the, the, um, they're nationalizing their companies and propping up their companies by the Chinese government buying out all the stock in those companies. So now the Chinese government owns the companies there. And uh, that makes it tougher on us yet. So if they can destroy our economy and hold all the manufacturing, they basically have the world under their control. So... Um, that's what I think is going on. I'm not usually a conspiracy theorist, but I do believe it's kind of funny that this virus came out two weeks after the new contract was signed. And so far, China is on the mend, don't have many deaths. Italy, with their one-pay medical system, has, well, they're not treating anybody over 80 years old, so people are dying like flies in Italy. And so, um, here we are. And we don't really know what we're dealing with yet. But I do know, I honestly believe that this disease, whatever, it's, it's just so strange that it developed in China. And here we are as China's trying to control the market and control us too. So that being said, regardless of, of whether that's the actual truth or, or conspiracy or whatever, I see it here. I see things like that that have gone on here. And it's been going on for quite a few years, and we have to put a stop to it. So whatever you can, 
when you buy any product, take the extra time to find out what you're getting. Try to buy American every chance you get, hire American every chance you get. We need to get this manufacturing back on, on our soil for our people who use these type of things, for our people who use this medical equipment, who use these speakers, who use any one of a thousand other products. Let's put America first. Let's buy American. Okay, that's it for today. You guys have a great day. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all on the other side of this thing. Bye now.